All right, as I've said to you in the past, that uh, a variety of methods we can use to uh, increase memory, whoops, I didn't mean to have a black one here. Um, one of the, the key methods we can use to increase memory uh, is to work on the information in a variety of ways. And, and one of those ways is to develop a hierarchy and being able to actually fill it in uh, is one way to do it. Uh, and that's true for these concepts it, it, when we talk about memory processing itself. And so what I want to do is just fill this in, add a few more comments, and then uh, we'll call it a day for at least module 24. So essentially when we're talking about memory processing itself, uh, we're talking about two different kinds of memory processing. We have automatic, uh, essentially, um, which we have been uh, talking a little bit about over the last uh, couple of videos. And then we have effortful. And, and essentially, as the name suggests, I am working to effort. I'm, I'm providing some effort to try to get some this uh, information into my memory. So all the work that you do, otherwise known as studying, in terms of processing information, laying it into memory at a later for a later recall, is a good example of effortful uh, memory. And that that's the key in two main categories. Now below each, something else incurs. And as you can imagine with auto, then uh, it would make sense that implicit memories are, fall into this category. They are automatically created uh, as a result of classical conditioning. We don't have to pro, uh, concentrate very much to do that. Um, and another word for this is non-declarative, and this will make sense in a minute as I explain it, but non-declarative memory. Uh, the other uh, aspect of this, which I mentioned to you, is uh, also you could throw in, if you will, procedural memory, although there is an effort at the, at the beginning of it, but um, it's, it's, uh, it would still fall into this particular category. The other side of the coin is explicit memory. And explicit memory, uh, you should be trying to fill this in ahead of me so that you can see how well you're remembering it yourself. But explicit memory oftentimes is referred to as de declarative. Uh, we also mentioned and I also referred to it as semantic memory. And it is uh, basically a consciously processed kind of memory. It's about conscious recall, not unconscious, uh, without conscious recall. Um, when we go down to, so we've got uh, process here, we've got uh, how do we classify it here, so that's classify. Um, this is process, either automatic or effortful. <clears throat> and then uh, the uh, neuroanatomy component of it uh, goes into this box. And here we're talking about cerebellum. And uh, basal ganglia. Ganglia. Uh, and on this side, uh, you can, you can uh, predict the hippocampus. And the frontal lobes. Okay, so when we get to the very bottom, then when we get down here, what we're going to look at down here are basically outcomes um, or areas uh, that are relevant or affected um, in our processing with these these particular processes. So we have the process, the classification of it, the neuroanatomy part of it, and then the areas themselves, uh, space, time, noticing frequency are some examples here. 
uh, for example, sequencing, like when you had dinner yesterday, uh, motor and cognitive skills are also here. Uh, you, we often learn these at this level. We don't have to recall again how to do it. Same way with thinking and cognition, cognitive skills. Um, and then also classical conditioning, uh, which is already, we've already mentioned a little bit about it. classical conditioning occurs on this side of the, of the um, uh, continuum conditioning. Over on this side, uh, like I mentioned, semantic knowledge, so facts uh, and general information. And general kinds of knowledge, like uh, where does the sun set would be an example of that. Uh, who was the first president of the United States would be another example. Um, how many seasons there are would also be an example. Uh, the other part of this is personally experienced events. Experienced. And it's these kinds of memories that are part of holidays and so forth. So <clears throat> what's key to remember is this is essentially what we're talking about here is a, a two-track system. And it's a two-track system that is extremely uh, efficient. Um, and it picks up information in a variety of ways through a variety of tracks, both that are automatic and um, and are also uh, require some measure of effort or focus. And that is the key for memory as we know it, is that we can uh, contain and capture a variety of information uh, through a variety of inputs that uh, allows us to process uh, important elements in our environment and be able to then recall them when we need them the most.